Senators, Senator Namajimba Price has submitted a proposal under Standing Order 75 today. It is shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? Is. Is the proposal? Thank you very much. The proposal is supported. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly. Senator Namajima Price. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move the motion. Uh, my motion today is to highlight the ineffective actions of our Prime Minister. My community, my hometown of Alice Springs, has been experiencing a crisis, not just of recent, but for some months now. Senators, excuse me, Senator Namajima Price. Senators who are not participating in the debate and are intending to leave the chamber, please do so quickly. And those who are staying in the chamber, please keep your comments a little bit quieter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. My hometown has been suffering. The rates of crime have skyrocketed through the roof. My co the community members in my hometown find it difficult to sleep at night with the threat of home invasions. They can't even walk down their street to go shopping on a daily basis because of the threat that looms before them. There are children on the streets of my community all night until the, until the early morning. But this isn't an issue that has come up in recent times. This is an issue that I have been talking about in these chambers since the very day I gave my first speech. And these are issues that not only I've been bringing up in these chambers, but certainly the member for Lingiari in the lower house has been bringing up ever since her first speech as well. Isn't it ironic? Here I am, an Indigenous voice in parliament. And yet what I've been trying to say has fallen on deaf ears when it comes to our Prime Minister. I'd like to remind these chambers, I'd like to remind everyone, Mr President, in this parliament of a tweet from the Prime Minister stating before he was Prime Minister, if I'm Prime Minister, I won't go missing when the going gets tough or pose for photos and then disappear when there's a job to be done. I'll show up, I'll step up and I'll work every day to bring our country together. What an absolute shame on the Prime Minister, given the fact that he turned up in my hometown after the calls, after the calls for months and spent less than four hours on the ground in my home community. He didn't even stay the night to see what was going on in my community. He didn't even stay to see the children on our streets late at night, the children who have largely been neglected and, and not taken care of by their own families, the children that are supposed to be under the care of territory families who have been victims of child sexual abuse, who have been victims of violence and abuse and alcohol-driven abuse within their homes, within the town camps of my community. Mr President, the Leader of the Opposition, Peter Dutton, in October visited my home community because he understood there were serious issues that needed to be understood on the ground. He came. He listened to community members. He listened to vulnerable women and children in my community, which then spurred him to reach out to the Prime Minister to offer a bipartisan approach to, to effectively manage the problems on the ground. He also called for a royal commission into the sexual abuse of Indigenous children. What have we heard from our Prime Minister on this issue? Nothing. Even after his four-hour fly-in, fly-out trip to my hometown of Alice Springs, where the residents are still reeling are beside themselves over the fact that they still feel neglected by our Prime Minister. They are furious that he came in, spent such a short amount of time on the ground did not speak to a community member, did not speak to vulnerable people from town camps, but 
to those he handpicked himself. It might as well have been a, a, a video conference over teams between the Labor Territory government and the Prime Minister. This is not good enough. This is not good enough. In the Northern Territory, of course, we have 30 per cent of our community is Indigenous. This proposed voice to parliament is not going to represent those voices because our votes in the Territory don't even count in this referendum anyway. How ironic is that? Here I am, a voice in parliament. I suggest I would ask that our Prime Minister work better to listen to and grow some ears so that he may actually take action and listen to those voices on the ground who called out for him for so long for help within the Northern Territory. Thank you, Senator Stewart. Thank you. What we are seeing in Alice Springs is absolutely devastatingly heartbreaking. I don't think anybody is suggesting otherwise. And the impact that uh, it will have on you know, some of those people's lives for the longer term will be um, significant. Significant. And sadly, the challenges faced by communities in Central Australia are not, are not new challenges. And more needs to be done to improve community safety and support community members to thrive. What we do know is that when you work with and listen to local communities, you achieve better outcomes. And I am you know, interested to hear Senator Nappinger Price talk about listening because I feel like some of the pleas of the communities for the last 10 years have fallen on deaf ears. Yesterday, the Prime Minister announced a quarter of a billion dollars in a plan for a better, safer future for Central Australia. This is in addition to the $48 million investment in community safety announced on the 24th of January this year. Next week, the Northern Territory Government will be introducing urgent le legislation to strengthen alcohol restrictions so that town camps and communities will revert to dry zones. These responses will improve community safety invest in health services, invest in families, tackle alcohol-related harm, focus on culture and on-country learning, and provide more opportunities for young people. Critically, this work will be delivered in partnership and by listening to these communities, and not by grandstanding in this place. Listening is absolutely critical. We can agree on that. President, Senator Nappinjipa Price's motion is redundant. She's been talking about it for months. And those on the opposite side would do well to stop playing politics with people's lives. She should be rallying around the Australian and Northern Territory government's package and, and backing it in. She should be working to ensure this package helps the community in the best way possible. There is an obligation on both sides of government to make it work to support the community now and into the future. I'm hearing nothing from the opposite side, nothing about the good work that is being done from First Nations leaders, community members and advocates in Central Australia. I'm hearing nothing from the Senator regarding the resilience of, Australian communities, of Central Australian communities and people. We are still here despite the statistics. The Closing the Gap report continues to publish statistics which show the current policies and initiatives are not leading to successful outcomes for First Nations communities. They're not leading to improvements in areas like social welfare, education, health, social justice and more. And that's just putting it politely. I'm proud to be part of a government who are fully committed to delivering a successful referendum on a voice to parliament in 2023. The voice to parliament is about giving Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples a say in matters that affect their communities. It's about creating practical and lasting change that will lead to better policies and improve the lives of First Nations people in areas like health, education and housing. As Annie Pat Anderson from the Referendum Committee has said, 
Every day, First Nations people don't have the megaphone of politicians. And so we need to give all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and communities a voice. Whilst the opposition have sought to distract attention from the core purpose of the voice, the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and Minister Linda Burney continue to share information about what the voice is about. Recognition and consultation. Polling shows that the vast majority of First Nations people support the government's proposed voice referendum. An estimated 80%. Their voice is what we want and what we need to begin to move forward as a nation to address the gaps for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across our nation. First Nations communities across Australia have been working towards the establishment for a voice for very many years. The referendum taking place later on this year is an invitation from First Nations people to each and every Australian. This invitation has been long-standing and directly from First Nations leaders across the country to you, the Australian people, not to politicians. Let's create a better future for all Australians. Thank you, Senator Stewart. Senator Waters. Thanks very much, uh, Acting Deputy President. There is no doubt that what is happening and has been happening for some time in Mapantway, Alice Springs, is a crisis. It's a crisis that stems from a lack of access to basic human rights, housing, employment, education, health care, land and self-determination. It's a crisis that will not be solved by an intervention 2.0 approach a top-down approach that ignores the dispossession at the heart of the crisis and perpetuates colonial oppression. The solutions must be holistic, self-determined and community-led. First Nations communities know what is needed. The government just hasn't been listening. Communities need funding for housing to address homelessness and overcrowding. Community-led health services are best placed to deliver effective prevention and health promotion programs, mental health services and healing places. Communities need a significant investment in growing the First Nations health and wellbeing workforce that will build capacity within communities for effective prevention and health promotion programs, mental health services and healing places. Communities need access to culturally appropriate childcare, education and employment opportunities. Governments must address the human rights crisis of imprisoning children in this country by raising the age of criminal responsibility. Labor must implement the outstanding recommendations of the Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody and the Bringing Them Home reports, recommendations that have shamefully sat on the shelf for decades. We welcome the funding commitment to the Tungajira Women's Council for Education Work, but communities need long-term, ample funding for frontline women's safety services and urgent progress on a standalone First Nations plan to end violence against women and children that is designed and implemented by First Nations women. And of course, we must progress truth-telling and treaty to start to heal this country and a voice to ensure that First Nations people are driving the solutions. Thank you, Senator Waters. Senator Little. Thank you. Thank you. I rise to speak to the emergency motion by Senator Nampajiba Price. I speak on this from the following informed context. I was born and raised in Alice Springs and many immediate family members still live in and around the township and both my parents are traditional owners of Central Australia. As a South Australian senator for Anangu Pijinjara Yungajara people who live remotely on the APY lands, which is in South Australia, Alice Springs is the closest major regional town. Visiting Alice Springs affects them. As a member of the Joint Standing Committee late last year, I heard the harrowing evidence given in Darwin and Alice Springs. I have directly been responsible for successfully transitioning more than 1,000 Indigenous people into the private sector for work, many directly from welfare. You can't get a job, run a business, function with any confidence amongst that chaos, and the chaos has been piled on in the last seven months. So it's from that perspective I highlight the failure of the Prime Minister to address the serious alcohol-related crime across the Northern Territory and outline the real devastating and life-changing impact of allowing the Stronger Futures legislation to lapse and failing to act earlier when the disaster unfolding became even clearer. When the sad images, the evidence and the voices became impossible to ignore because the national media turned its attention to Alice Springs, the Prime Minister had already wasted seven months 
blaming and waiting for others to act when he could have acted. The mistake of ending Stronger Futures did this. He could have used his powers under the Constitution, and we know it's not shy about fast-tracking legislation when it wants to. The Northern Territory government refused to act, and this government didn't want to until the tide of evidence and the public opinion was against them. There was a 54 per cent jump in alcohol-related assault in the past year in Alice Springs and a 34 per cent rise in the same period in Catherine. In Alice Springs, house break-ins rose 22.56 per cent, commercial break-ins were up 55 per cent, motor vehicle theft up 31 per cent, property damage jumped by 59 per cent. There was a road toll spike of 50 per cent in the year across the Northern Territory. At a time when this Labor government tells us the cost of living is the most important issue for Australians, they continually failed to act as Central Australians repaired broken windows and smashed property over and over and over again. Now let's talk about the smashed lives. As this escalated, insurance premiums skyrocketed. They rose 50 per cent over that same time. Businesses closed, long-term locals left, and tourists stopped coming and businesses closed their doors. All this while grappling with the cost of living. Although his, the Prime Minister took his own plane for that four-hour trip, the commercial flights to the nation centre have many, many cheap and empty seats. Go and have a look. There's a massive economic toll as a consequence of inaction. So there's people affected because they have alcohol addiction and binge issues. There are those whose lives are tragically shattered and disrupted by antisocial and unlawful actions, and there are those that are impacted by alcohol. They're not all Aboriginal people, but those that drink to excess commonly have blood alcohol levels of 0.4. And in fact, the doctor at the local hospital told us that in his entire life he has never seen a hospital where the police drop off more people than the ambulance. Innocent people. Women, children and the elderly who bear the brunt of such antisocial behaviour, violence and intimidation are affected the most, and you had plenty of warning. The immediate and cumulative individual, family and community impact is devastating. So this week we hear there's a reset so that a proper transition plan can be put in place to allow communities an order, orderly decision-making process to determine if they remain dry communities or not. You were told that. There's $250 million allocated now for programs. But as I said in my first speech in this chamber in July this year, money is not the only answer. The pretenders, controllers and rescuers need to be nowhere near this new money, and the public servants need to be more accountable for the programs they deliver, and politicians, all of us, need to be more accountable for the money that's spent. This is not about voice. This is about listening to those voices that told you this Thank, was going to happen. Thank you, Senator Little. Senator Babbitt. Thank you. A few hours in Alice Springs, just enough time for a photo op and a hastily arranged press conference. But a few days at the tennis, though, plenty of time to watch the men's semi final, then the women's final, and don't forget the men's final after that. Now, tell me again how committed the Prime Minister is to helping Indigenous Australians. Probably not that much. A crime wave in Alice Springs, whatever. Children roaming the streets at 2 a.m. because they're too scared to go home, whatever. But how good was Novak Djokovic, though Prime Minister? How good was he? Now, a few hours in Alice Springs, but a few days at the tennis, that tells you everything you need to know about how committed this Labor government is to helping Indigenous Australians. Give us a wave, the Melbourne Park crowd yelled as the Prime Minister happily obliged. He waved to the crowd, laughed all around, a bit of a hoot. Now that's all that this Prime Minister is good for, a wave. Give us a solution to the crime wave in Alice Springs. How's about that, Mr Albanese? Give us a solution to the wave of suffering, Mr Albanese. Give us a solution to the wave of school truancy in Indigenous communities, Mr Albanese. Nothing. Nil. Nada. 
Signalling to the crowd is where the Prime Minister excel. He is good for a wave, a gesture, a sleight of hand, but with no substance behind it. He ignores the voices of Indigenous leaders like Senator Jacinta Price, all the while claiming that we need to listen to Indigenous people. A few hours in Alice Springs, a few days at the tennis. Now, Indigenous people in this country they deserve much, much better. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Babbitt. Senator McCarthy. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. And I thank the Senator for bringing on the matter uh, for urgency in regards to Alice Springs uh, and in regards to Central Australia. This is certainly a, an issue that does hit at the heart uh, very personally, and I do understand deeply uh, the concerns of the Senator's opposite. But I'm also more concerned as well in regards to the families uh, in Central Australia and the businesses uh, in regards to Alice Springs. Uh, there is no doubt uh, there has been deep trauma and continues to be, Mr Acting Deputy President, uh, in terms of what people see as their future and what kind of future they can have uh, in Alice Springs and in Central Australia. Now, there is no doubt uh, there is a lot of anger and there is a lot of hurt. But we have moved to ensure that there is a circuit breaker and that there is change. And this is really critical. It's critical because people cannot take it if we do not do more. And that is why working with Congress, with Tunganjira, with SNAKE, with the hospital, with the police, with the Families and Children's Services, with the Northern Territory Government, and yes, there is no doubt that there are decisions that they needed to rethink and redo. But we are enormously pleased that those bans in terms of the communities across the Northern Territory and in terms of Alice Springs itself will be back in force as of Wednesday next week, once the Northern Territory Assembly does sit and pass the amendments that is required under the Northern Territory legislation. But it is people like Marion Scringer, the member for Lingiari, and of course Senator Nampajimba Price, who raised it in their opening speeches here. We know in the Northern Territory from the intervention in 2007 that there is also a concern with Aboriginal communities right across the Territory and not just Central Australia. And this has been something that I've also struggled deeply with and continue to do so, but will no doubt ensure, with the $250 million that we've said must go into, the areas not just alcohol, but the areas that hit at the deep cause of what is the problem. The health system, looking at fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, the hospital system that requires the assistance to protect our women and children, and we know that through the youth and the programs that we put together uh, through the funding has to work, Mr Acting Deputy President. And as for those businesses in Alice Springs, there is no doubt that the pain you have suffered and continue to in terms of your own economic future has resonated greatly, not just here across the parliament but across the country. But this is the turning point, and I say this to the residents and the families of Alice Springs and Central Australia, this is the turning point of this parliament, where no more, no more do we want to see the pain and suffering that we have witnessed to extreme levels in the past month, but even more personally amongst those families in the town camps around Alice Springs. No more. Enough. We do accept that we have the responsibility here to make things better, and we take that responsibility on board very seriously. I'm enormously grateful to be able to stand beside Marion Scrimger, Linda Burney, Patrick Dodson, and know that we are doing everything we possibly can in terms of the federal jurisdiction 
not to intervene as they did in 2007, but to ensure the accountability and governance that it should occur by a Territory Parliament to do what it needs to do. And I look forward to the Northern Territory Parliament doing that next week. But in the meantime, we are going to ensure that those families on the ground, Mr Acting Deputy President, do feel safe and do feel that we care and that things will turn around for the better and that instead of despair and instead of trauma, that they have hope for the future. Thank you, Senator McCarthy. Senator McKenzie. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. And I support Senator Nampajimpa Price's motion before the Senate today and note that if this had been a natural disaster, the Prime Minister would have been on the first VIP plane out of Canberra to get his feet on the ground to assess the damage and offer comfort and solution and a big bucket of cash to affected communities. But because it was a national shame, a national disgrace, a crisis occurring far away from uh, capital cities, far away from the tennis and cricket, far away from his summer break, he had to be shamed shamed by the senators I'm proud to stand with, and I acknowledge both of the strong female voices here from Central Australia. S Senator Nampajimpa Price, a former deputy um, mayor of Alice Springs, and Senator Karen Little, whose country uh, and family roots go back to Central Australia and Alice Springs in particular to tell their lived experience and the lived experience of their families and their communities. And they've been doing it from the day they both got here. And let's count that back. In excess of eight months you've heard this and you did nothing and you knew the Stronger Futures legislation was lapsing and you knew the NT government had nothing in place because you guys, like your decisions on the cashless debit card, think they were racist policies. That's why you did nothing, and you're actually shamed into doing it. I think it is an absolute indictment uh, on this Labor government that purports to support Indigenous uh, Australians. I'm very proud to have been the minister responsible. One of the best things that happened in my career was to be appointed uh, Regional Development Minister under Malcolm Turnbull and to have negotiated the Barclay Regional Deal with then Chief Minister Gunner and the Barclay Regional Council. A two-year-old's rape in Tennant Creek made our government say, you know what, the, fund, the record funding into Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander affairs in this country at a state, territory, federal, community level is not working when we live in a country like ours and there are children getting raped every night. It was one of my proudest days—$78.4 million across 28 separate measures, um, cultural uh, and social and economic. And one of the great indictments, I guess—and again, it is the NT Territory Labor government's failure—when I spoke to my department and people, stakeholders on the ground, what was actually going to be the game changer? Is it another skate park? Is it this? You know, no, it was actually going to be to map the services from different levels of government and the private sector and charities going into that community and find the gaps so the kids stop falling through the, those gaps. And I'm standing here with the report card of the Barclay Regional Deal Implementation Plan and of the 28 measures, most of them are implemented. In fact, all of them are implemented except the government investment and service system reform, where we actually work in partnership between federal and territory government, so we focus on the actual people. Five years later, we haven't got it together, and that lays at the feet of the Gunner government. I would call on the Labor Party to support an election commitment we made in Alice at the Yipurinya Aboriginal School. Fantastic young principal, Gavin Morris. 
proud Indigenous man, great NRL guy, uh, teacher sport. They all love him. This is a school that teaches in language, four local languages, including Walpuri and Arunda. We promise $8.3 million to build a student accommodation facility there, because these kids come in from town camps. It's a two-way, one-way one trip. And even back then, this principal was telling us he needed to provide secure accommodation for his kids so that they could stay safely and continue to learn during the learning week, if they so chose to. Labor Party didn't support that uh, election commitment. We knew what was going on. We knew you knew, and you did nothing about it, and you had been shamed into making the NT government come to the table. Thank you, Senator McKenzie. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Namajimba Price be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it.